Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm Jesse, and I do the Live Coding with Jesse show on the Free Code Camp YouTube channel. So just a little bit about me to start. I just accepted a position as a senior software engineer at Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, so I'll be, thank you. <laughs> uh, so I spent the last month doing a lot of interviews, and I'll be starting that job uh, at the end of November. And the good news is they're really excited about my live coding, so I'll be able to keep doing it, uh, which, is, which is awesome. All my free code camp work is, is volunteer. Uh, almost everyone at free code camp volunteers. Uh, so all the, the blogs and the, the whole course, uh, the podcasts, the YouTube shows, everything is all uh, just a huge network of volunteers. It also, you'll find out that I'm not great at making slides. So apologies in advance. <laughs> uh, I wanted to start out and thank everybody because uh, I don't want to leave it to the end because I might run out of time and forget. So first of all, uh, I'm going to thank my wife, Becca. We have four kids and she's watching all four kids by herself for a week while I'm gone. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Uh, she's going to get to go to JSConf in Hawaii though. So. I'll watch the kids for her, so I think, I think she, she gets a pretty good deal. Um, I do want to thank all the DocFest organizers, volunteers, and attendees, especially the attendees here, because I know lunch started in track two, so I appreciate the sacrifice to be here. Also, I want to thank uh, everybody at Free Code Camp, especially Quincy and Bo, who uh, first saw my live stream videos and gave me a chance. All right, so here's the plan for, uh, for this talk. So just want to do an overview about how we even got started with it. Uh, just try to give you a little glimpse about what the community is like and how it's developed. Uh, give you some insight into what I've learned. And then I want to get like kind of practical and let you know how you could get into live coding if, if that's something that you want to do. All right, so here's how I got started. This is a quote from me. And this is what I thought. I thought, hey, I, there are so many really great tutorials <laughs> on YouTube. Um, I can't do that. Like, they're, they're great. They're perfect. And I don't know how to edit videos. Uh, so what I could do, though, is just mess up live and try to figure out how to fix it. And so that that's, was the idea that I started with. And I didn't know if anybody would be interested. And at first, no one was. So I remember uh, I had some of the first streams and nobody watched the live streams. For a while, I had one person that would watch the live streams. And um, then I went on the Free Code Camp forum and I said, hey, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, I welcome any advice. And I put a link to my live streams. And that's when Bo Carnes, who does the JavaScript tutorials for Free Code Camp, uh, contacted me and said, hey, I saw your live stream. Are you, are you interested in live streaming for Free Code Camp? And uh, at the time, my YouTube channel had like three subscribers, and Free Code Camp had like 150,000. Uh, now I think we're probably going to get to 500,000 today or tomorrow, it looks like. We're really close. Uh, but of course, I said yes. <laughs> I could never hope to reach that many people on my own. So that's when I started out for Free Code Camp. And the plan was every day to live stream for an hour or two. Uh, just my regular work that I was doing, my boss was OK with it. I was already open sourcing everything. So I would just try to pick whatever the most interesting thing was that I had to work on that day and just narrate it while I was, while I was coding. Uh, so I did that. It's been a year and a half now. I think it's been about a year and a half that we've been doing that. So the community has developed a lot. And uh, this is, I'm, I'm going to show you some quotes from the community and try to describe it. Uh, I guess it's hard to really describe it unless you're, you're kind of in the stream and, and get a feel for it. But it's, it's pretty amazing. We have people of all ages. I think we've had uh, seven-year-olds all the way up to, I believe we've had people in their 60s. Uh, so a huge range of, of ages, uh, people all over the world. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any, I mean, definitely all the continents that people live on. Uh, and um, yeah, pretty much every, everywhere. Uh, 
we also have lots of skill levels. So there are people who watch the stream who are way better than me. I have no idea why they watch me. Um, but they're really helpful, though, because they see my mistakes before I do and tell me how to do it right. <laughs> and they, they also um, contribute. So a lot of the uh, viewers will actually uh, open pull requests for the project. So if I mention during a stream, like, you know what? We should probably refactor this, but we don't have time right now. The next day, I'll usually wake up to an email saying that somebody submitted a pull request and they've already refactored it. Uh, so that, that's been very helpful. Um, and then overall, it's positive. I was very nervous at first that uh, I would get a lot of negative feedback. Uh, I've always been a solo developer. Uh, so I was a freelancer, and then I, I work now at a small university, and I mainly work you know, on one project, it's just, just me. So I never really had a chance to compare my skills to other developers uh, in, until I did the live stream. So I wasn't sure how it would go, if, if everybody would say, what are you doing? This isn't the way you, you code. Um, but I was very su surprised and thankful that it's been positive. So here's a few of the positive comments that, that I've gotten. So I, this, one is, <laughs> this one is really positive, right? Uh, these are all actual like, comments on YouTube or in the, uh, in the live chat. Okay. Amazing. So I used to do 2 p.m. every day. That time slot seemed to work out for most people. Uh, it's hard, you know, because all the ti different time zones, there's not really a great time for everybody. Um, I haven't stuck to that 2 p.m. lately, though. <laughs> uh, I really like this one uh, because this quote really, uh, it gets to the heart of what I think is unique, other than the fact that I mess up live, which not a lot of people do. Uh, what's really unique is just the, uh, how nice everybody is in the, in the stream. Um, and the fact that, well, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this uh, later on, but we do get some negative comments, um, but the way that we respond to that on the stream, I think really is the key to keeping everything so positive. Uh, also, when you're thinking about like mentoring through live coding, it, I don't know, it, to me, it, it's not obvious, right? Mentoring is usually like one-on-one, -on -one. I'm actually gonna see the person, you know, and it's very helpful though for some people so this person has situational anxiety. Uh, they would, are not the type of person that would ever go to a meetup or reach out to anybody on their own. But when they can sit at their home and just watch the live stream and chat, uh, it, it really, um, it just opens up so much for them. Uh, and I do like to share um, about my mental health as well. And it's kind of like an open, an open place where, you know, we mostly stick to code, but sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll share tips for how to deal with mental health, physical health, uh, you know, uh, kind of in the question and answer sessions, which come at the, the end of the stream. And surprisingly, there are a lot of people are really interested in those, uh, in those issues. And then I have to put this in just for the irony of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's a few of the negative things. And um, towards the end of the talk, when you start getting hungry, you'll probably think this too. <laughs> but this is my main complaint that I get, which I'm happy, if this is the only thing people complain about, uh, I'm okay with that, right? So uh, I, to this comment, I think I replied, thank you, this is very helpful. <laughs> because I really do uh, talk too much when I stream sometimes. This one is a little extreme. I think on this stream, I didn't intend to code though, so it's not fair. <laughs> it was, <laughs> we were planning a project, so it was a lot of talking. <laughs> and I love this one. <laughs> Some of the streams go very long. I recommend, if you do want to check out any of the recordings of my streams, watch it on like double speed, okay, because I sound a lot more intelligent on double speed. <laughs> when I take these breaks, because I don't know what I'm doing, but it's double speed, like I type really fast on double speed. 
I figure out problems twice as fast. So watch me on double speed. I, I like me better like that. <laughs> All right, so here's some of the things that, that I've learned from live coding. Actually, sorry, I'm going to check my time because I have a timer set up and I forgot to start it. So <laughs> I'm going to have to keep checking the clock. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what, some of the things that I've taken away from this over the last year and a half is that mentoring through live coding really does work, and, and it works in the form of uh, it encourages collaboration. Uh, if, if you look at my uh, GitHub repos that I've uh, live streamed, I think the last project I did, there were a dozen pull requests, uh, and a lot of the pull requests I get are from people submitting their very first pull request. So I, I encourage that, uh, kind of gets newer people involved in the open source community. And uh, people are really nervous. I mean, I remember being really nervous the first time I, I submitted a pull request, right? It's like uh, almost as nerve wracking as answering a question on Stack Overflow. Uh, but <laughs> I, I still don't do that very much. <laughs> but um, yeah, people who otherwise would be, would, would never try, uh, really seem to like, you know, they want to help. It, like, it's good to point out in the live streams, if you want to help, here's an area where you can help. You know, this is what I'm thinking. Let me know if, if you need help. We'll walk you through it. Uh, and not only on my projects, but we'll, we'll have groups of people that met each other through the live chat we'll work on side projects together. Uh, and that's really cool. And then some, they'll come back and say, hey, check out this project. Uh, so that's been really nice to see, you know, people connecting and working on projects. Okay. But also, it, it builds so much confidence. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've all heard of imposter syndrome, right? Because everybody has imposter syndrome, right? Uh, so many people watch the stream and will make comments like, oh, I, I can't do this, this is too hard, like, you know, it's so, so difficult for me to learn. Uh, but, you know, of course I try to encourage him, but the whole community will type and say, don't worry about it, you know, just keep practicing, keep doing, and those same people you'll see uh, get better. They will come in the stream and say, hey, I got, a, I got an interview coming up. And then the next thing I hear, they'll say, hey, I got a job offer. And then I won't hear from them for a couple of weeks because they're too busy working. And then they'll come back. <laughs> it'll, it'll pop back in the stream and say, hey, I, you know, just wanted to check in. Like, here's what I'm working on. And uh, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's a little bit sad because a lot of times they can't watch the stream anymore because they're at work. But I'm also really happy for them and usually stay in touch, like through Twitter or something. And uh, we've, had, we've had several people kind of go through that whole process uh, kind of right there on the live stream. And so, I mean, I, we, obviously I don't take credit for people getting jobs, but uh, I, I like that I was able to be a part of that process for them, you know, and offer encouragement and, and help. All right, so now I want to get practical. Let me check my time. Ooh. We're a little bit more practical here. Um, if you want to start live coding, technically, it's very easy, right? Go on YouTube, go on Twitch, broadcast, right? You don't even need special equipment. Uh, you can use, I believe you can broadcast through Hangouts right in your browser uh, onto YouTube and share your screen if you wanted to. I use OBS, which is a free uh, streaming software. I think it works on all uh, operating systems. And uh, it, it kind of lets you do a little bit more with customizing your screen and your resolution and everything. But uh, I started out, I used the default camera on my, uh, my iMac and just the, the regular built-in microphone. And that's good enough. Uh, you're, you're, you're coding, right? So you don't need a high resolution camera or anything like that. Uh, so, you know, get, if you really want to start, it's, it's that easy, you know, just to, uh, just to start. And then code and narrate while you code. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, it would also be good maybe to like 
put it on social media that you're going to do it so that people know. <laughs> Otherwise, nobody will watch. Um, but just throwing something out on, on Twitter or on a forum or something uh, usually will generate uh, some, some interest. How am I on time? Am I good? Okay. All right. So here's some advice. And at first I, I said helpful advice. And then I thought, like, that's a little pretentious, right? Like, maybe it's not. <laughs> I don't know exactly if it'll help you. So that's why I changed it to hopefully helpful. Uh, but here's things that, that have helped me along the way. Uh, and the first one is always, like, be ready to adapt uh, to feedback. So you're going to get feedback. I frequently ask for it, but people, you usually don't even have to ask for it. People are definitely willing on the internet to tell you what they think. So uh, it's good to adapt. Like sometimes it doesn't fit, right? People will come on and say, well, why don't you build a project using this technology? And I'll say, well, I mean, I can't. Like, I'm, I'm at work doing live stream, so I can't really adapt to that. Uh, but if somebody suggests something that fits with my project, I'll say, okay, let's try it. Uh, and sometimes people will say, why are these videos so long? It should be 10 minutes. I say, well, there's no way I can do a live stream project in 10 minutes. So something like that, <laughs> I can't. But if at all possible, I try to accommodate uh, requests. Um, so even little things like people will let you know if your font size is too small uh, or if, if something's wrong with your microphone or any, you know, technical things. Uh, it's good to get feedback because um, you don't you don't really see yourself like they see you through the stream. Uh, a lot of people have lower quality. So definitely always set your font size way higher than you think is necessary. Um, and I would recommend it to definitely show your mistakes. If you're live coding, show your mistakes. Uh, it's going to be really hard. Like, some people rehearse, right? And that's, that's fine. But even if, even if I rehearsed, I probably still couldn't do everything you know, without making mistakes. But the mistakes are important. The mistakes show people, uh, especially beginners, that somebody who's a professional developer still messes up and still has to look up things. Sometimes little things that, you, you know, just some small syntax that's very basic and you have to look it up like, oh, how do, how do I do a for loop? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's like I do for loops all the time, but for some reason I can't remember the syntax. Uh, and that, that means so much to them because if they're always looking at tutorials where everything's perfect, they start to think like, well, when I'm a real developer, that's how I'll be. And they get this idea that like, they're not really a real developer. Uh, but I, I don't know about all of you, but I mess up a lot. I have to look up things a lot. Uh, so that's, that's important. I wish that I had known that when I was starting out. <laughs> Uh, just, just how often you know you you need to look things up, and that that's okay. You know that's what we do. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, that's that's a great y'all clap because I messed up on on camera. That's good. Um, <laughs> okay. Also, show your face. When I first started, I did not want to show my face on camera um, because I well, number one, it's just one more thing to think about, like. Am I making a weird face or something like that? Uh, but also, I, I didn't want it to be like about me and my personality. I wanted it just to be about the code. Uh, but I read an article. I wish I could remember who wrote it. But uh, I read an article, and it was saying, so much of your meaning is conveyed through facial expressions. So if you're live streaming and you're not showing your face, your audience is really missing out on a lot of nonverbal cues. Uh, so when I looked at it from that perspective, I said, okay, let's, let's do it. So I ended up showing my face, and I, I do think it's really important uh, to be able to see my expression uh, of you know, happiness or frustration or you know, whatever um, I'm going through, I think is, is important. And it's nice, like, you see somebody smiling, like, usually it makes you happy, right? So even if I don't do anything awesome when I'm coding, like, at least if I smile and I'm happy, it, it might make somebody else happy, right? So if, that, if that's the only thing that happens during my stream, I'm okay with that. That's, that's a success. Um, also, do not be afraid to say that you don't know something. Uh, so there's such a temptation to try to act like I know a thing, right? Somebody say, oh, have you ever heard of this? And 
really it's like, okay, yeah, I maybe saw it somewhere, like in a headline, right? But I don't really know it, right? Have you ever used this thing? Maybe, you know, it's like you could say yes, but in reality, if all you did was like a hello world tutorial, it's like, do you really know it, right? So people will call you out on that. Because the next question is always going to be, well, like, well, why don't you use it? Or what about this? Or what about that? <laughs> so you, they will find out if you're, just, if you're trying to look like you're more knowledgeable than you really are. So I find it best to just be completely honest. And even if I think I know a little bit about something, I'll say, you know what? Like, tell me about that thing. Uh, because I'm, I'm not sure. You know, I don't, I don't really know that much about it. And then people appreciate that. Um, you know, when they ask a question, I just say, I'm sorry, I don't know. Is there anybody else in the stream that knows more about it? Let us know. Uh, and that's a lot better. There's a big responsibility when people start watching you and want advice from you to, to not give them bad advice. Uh, so I think it's much better to say, I don't know, than to give somebody advice that is going to lead them in the wrong direction, you know, just because of my ego of not wanting to look like I don't know. Um, also, when s this is... This is really kind of a tricky thing, and I see people getting mad about this on Twitter and things like that, where you get this unsolicited advice from people, um, and it's really condescending because they'll say, they'll try to teach you something that you already know. Sometimes it's very basic, and you're almost like insulted that they would think that you, you don't know that. Um, this is really hard to do, but when this happens, I usually just say thank you, and I don't mention at all that I already knew it. And the people that watch my stream realize that I know how to do that thing because we've already done it so many times, usually, right? So it's not like anybody is going to think somehow that I have no clue what I'm doing. Um, but that person potentially could be genuinely trying to help. Maybe they're new and don't realize how basic that thing is. Maybe they just learned it. And they're really excited and they think, wow, like I know this, I'm, you know, this is awesome. So I just assume the best of that person and say thank you. Um, in reality, you know, maybe they are just trying to make me look bad or show off or something, but I don't know that. So that's, that's a big way to, to stay positive because <laughs> like that could turn into like some snarky comment or an argument or something, but it just totally diffuses everything if you just say, oh, thanks. Uh, and that's, uh, be positive and encouraging. Like, that's, that's like the number one thing I think uh, that I can do is just help people to uh, just have a, a little bit of a better day, a little better experience. Um, let's see. And this is also a quote that I came up with yesterday, so I put it in here. <laughs> Give encouragement, not solutions. We solve problems as developers, that's our job. So when someone asks us about something or they say, could you check out my code? Immediately we want to just say like, oh, I'll do this, right? Let's fix it. But that's not what people need when they're beginners and they need a mentor. They, there's documentation for everything. There are tutorials for everything. Maybe put them in the right direction to be able to find it, but they need encouragement for you to say, you can do this. Like, I know you're stuck right now, but just push through. Like, you're going to figure it out. Because for, if you've been doing this for long enough, you know there have been times when you just think, this is impossible. But you keep going because you have to, because it's your job, or you, know, you need to get paid, you need to pay the bills, so you can't quit. Um, and then you get past it, and eventually you do figure it out. So the next time that happens, you don't freak out, because you're like, okay, this, this is just a regular Monday, or so, you know, I don't know what I'm doing again. Um, so... Beginners don't know that, though. Beginners start to think, maybe I'm not smart enough. Uh, if you would just give them the solution, they're still going to think they're not smart enough because you gave them the solution. But if you encourage them to push through, they'll figure it out, and they'll have that same experience that can help them get through the next time. All right, I think this is last, last, how much, how good am I in time? Still good? Okay. Sorry, I, can't, I had it all set up. I have a timer on my screen, and it was going to be awesome. Um, okay, so here's some things to avoid. All right, uh, don't talk badly about a framework, a library, language, whatever. So 
when somebody asks me, well, what about, so I do React, right? So I always get the question, what about Vue? What about Angular, right? Every single time I stream. Uh, and there are a lot of people that watch the stream that are Angular developers or Vue developers or whatever, right? If I were to go on there and say, well, React is the best, I have no idea why anybody else uses anything else other than React. I've just like offended a lot of people, right? Really for no reason. Uh, so even when people come on and are like, well, I just started using like jQuery and it's really cool. I'm like, all right, cool. I remember when I used to use jQuery. Like, you know, there are a lot of sites that still use jQuery. You can say something positive about really anything, you know, and you could spin it. You say, all right, yeah, you know, there's, there's definitely jobs for jQuery out there. Like a lot of the newer, like new projects are using React. But like I started out with jQuery, it's a great way to just make stuff happen on the page. Right? So instead of me saying, and, that, and that's entirely true. It's also true if I said like, listen, you need to move on past jQuery because people like, that's not the way to do things now. Uh, that would be very negative, but also true. So I think there's always like a true way to say something without being negative about something and, and offending or causing a bad experience uh, for a lot of your viewers. Uh, also, like, don't, don't laugh at a question. So I make myself look uh, kind of silly at times so that I can spare the feelings of people. So it's really hard to tell in a chat, like a live chat, when someone types a question, are they asking this like seriously or are they joking? If I assume they're joking and I laugh and that was actually a serious question, that's going to hurt their feelings. Like they could be devastated if they're, especially if they're a beginner, right? So I always take it seriously. And then usually somebody will say like, oh, I was just joking. And then I laugh and then I'm okay. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess I, I learned this maybe more with kids because kids sometimes will ask questions that sound ridiculous, but they're actually serious, right? And depending on how sensitive the, the kid is, like they will get really upset. They'll like cry if you laugh. So, so I, I, maybe I'm more aware of that just because of that. But I, um, yeah, I mean, I probably look like I don't, I don't get things a lot, but it's, it's on purpose and I'm okay with that. <laughs> also, like, don't get angry. Even if people say things that are upsetting, like, you can control how you react to it. Like, you could have the feeling of anger, but you don't have to show it. Uh, so usually, again, this is a situation where I take a deep breath and I think the best of that person. Like, they said this thing. It seems terrible, but maybe their English isn't very good. Maybe in their culture, this isn't really a rude thing to say. Maybe they just had the worst day ever, right? Anything I can think of to help me get rid of that anger and be positive, I do. Now, if somebody comes in the chat and says something like clearly offensive, like racist, something like that, they just get banned. They get banned immediately. I don't say anything. If occasionally I'll say, hey, I'm sorry, I don't know if anybody saw that comment, but we don't, we don't say things like that in this chat. We keep it positive, right? So that's, that's it. They're just gone. Um, and luckily, I've only had to do that maybe twice in a year and a half. Uh, so I, I don't know how, because there, there are places on the internet where like that's all everything. It's just always comments like that. I, don't, I have no idea why like this community has been so lucky uh, that, that we don't get that. Uh, when you code, just code. And when you read the chat, just read the chat. <laughs> This took me a long time to, uh, to get this right. I, at one time, tried to code and just look at the chat like all the time. And then every time a question came up, I would just stop and answer the question. And I didn't get anything done. Because I was always being interrupted. Like, it works when nobody's watching you. But as soon as you start to get more viewers, it doesn't work. Uh, so what I started to do is use Pomodoro uh, sessions. So a, a Pomodoro timer is like a 25 minute period and then I take a five minute break. So for the first hour, I do Pomodoros and then the five minute break, I answer questions. Uh, usually like the, the standard format is two Pomodoro sessions of code and then th afterwards I answer all the questions that are left over. Sometimes there's too many questions and I have to say like, okay, we'll stop because like, I have to go home now. I'm done with work. Uh, 
but uh, that seems to be a lot better. And as new people come in and ask questions, I just say like, hey, you know, I got 10 minutes left on my timer. If you stick around for 10 minutes, I, I'll get to your question. Uh, and if I miss questions, I can always say like, hey, just, you know, reach out to me on Twitter, put it in the comments in the chat, like I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, also, avoid the negativity. We've already talked about this, I'm not going to talk that much more about it, but the way I feel is there's enough negativity already, right? If people want negativity, they can just turn on the television, watch the news, read, like it's everywhere, all the time. Uh, so they don't need it when we're talking about code. Uh, so there are a lot of like really important issues that are really tough issues that should be talked about, but, but not on my show. And that's, that's not what it's for. Um, so occasionally if something happens in the world, like we may, somebody might bring it up, somebody might talk about it. So we just, it's not like I ignore it. We just kind of address it quickly, try to be as kind as possible about it, and then kind of get, get to the code. And, all right, cool. So now is the, <laughs> this is the last. So if anybody wants to ask me anything now, feel free. Or you can ask me later if you see me walking around. You can check out the Free Code Camp live streams on the Free Code Camp YouTube. I also have my own channel. Uh, I do some live streams on there. I do some tutorial videos and things on there. I'm not nearly as active on there as I am on uh, Free Code Camp, but you can check it out too. I'm on Twitter, Jesse R. Weigel, and I'm on Instagram. Uh, so Instagram is like the happiest code community ever uh, because you just people post pictures of themselves and a laptop and a cup of coffee. Like, every, if you want, you can get a thousand followers on Instagram and, and like pretty quickly if every day you just post a picture of you, your laptop and coffee. Uh, <laughs> And everybody will say, oh, this is amazing. Uh, so I like it just to make me happy. But I'm on there too if you, <laughs> if you want to follow me. So uh, any, any questions? I'm a, it's hard to see. So I might not be able to see. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so who has a question? And Jesse, you were early, so we have plenty of time for questions. Okay. And nobody wants to have lunch anyway, so I mean, it's... it's yeah, if, if you don't want to yeah. answer because you're all hungry, I'm totally fine with that. Just ask me later. <laughs> ask me while we're eating. Yeah, yeah, comments are good, too, yeah. Is it on? That was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> How do you feel like, actually, I do have a question. Yeah. Right? <laughs> How do you feel like this can be implemented in other countries and other languages? Do you think that... It, it, the same model can be used, or are there some barriers that we need to think about? Yeah, I, I think it could be used, and I think it would be really helpful, right? I mean, I, I only speak English, like most Americans, um, so <laughs> it's just like, we don't have that many other languages, it's just, uh, but anyway, yeah, I think it could be, and I think it would be important, uh, areas like, uh, especially India, I think would be great, uh, because I get a lot of viewers from India, and but only the people that can really understand English can get a lot of value out of it. Um, places um, like China it would be great because there's a lot of issues with being able to even watch uh, things. So something in China that would help people in China and be allowed by you know uh, their regulations would be good. Um, yeah, I think that's, that would be great. I would, I would actually love it if somebody like volunteered to do uh, subtitles or s something for, for my videos. Uh, it's a lot of content and a lot of work, but I've thought of that before and I thought that would be really cool. And, uh, actually, I, I just remembered one thing I always like to say. Uh, so if there are some of you out there that have had a negative experience on the internet with other coders, I totally understand. I see that all the time. And, um, 
I just want to say I'm fully aware of my privilege as a white man that a lot of the negativity that you all get based on your situation, I don't get. So when I say this is an overwhelmingly positive community, you may be rolling your eyes. <laughs> and I totally understand that. Um, you know, depending on your situation, all, you know, my advice may need to change. You know, it may not be, I, I know like my wife is also a coder. And every time she posts a picture of her with her laptop and her coffee, she gets comments about her looks. And your eyes are beautiful, You're, you know. Will you be my girlfriend? And no, I have a husband. It's okay, will you be, you know, stuff like that. I never get that, never. Actually, somebody in my live stream told me I was handsome once. It was like the best thing ever. So, <laughs> so but, but I totally understand that it's, it's different for different people. Uh, so, um, I, w I would hope that at least some of this could be uh, applicable, um, but I, d I don't want to be up here, and I don't want to make it seem like, hey, everybody can do this and I'm oblivious to everything, but. <laughs> Hi, thanks for the talk. Now I regret that I apply for a question because you start some very important topic that we as uh, guys should, should emphasize here. But my question was was something a bit different. Uh, when you do your streaming, do you do you base everything around one specific project, and then the, you continue, or you uh, solve some small typical problems that developer in React I don't know face in every day? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so the question was, do I do my streams with one project and just continue on with each stream, or uh, is it kind of more fragmented and just a topic here or there? Uh, so usually I, I do a project. So on Free Code Camp, there are playlists separated by you know, project one, project two, project three. Uh, so we've done five, six, I think we've done six projects. Some are, are smaller than others. Like project five has over 100 videos. Uh, so that's huge. Um, sometimes if I need to do something, some small task on something else, there'll be a stream that's just like not connected necessarily with the project. So I have done that. I've done some streams. Usually I put those streams on my channel because I don't want to mess up the kind of the flow on Free Code Camp. So, you know, if I get a take home interview question, like sometimes I'll just live stream me doing that. Or I did like a blockchain tutorial and say, okay, I'm just going to live stream that. So occasionally I will do something different. And uh, sometimes it's fun to do that and just take a break. Uh, but otherwise, it's nice to have the continuity so people can see the progression. Good question. Thank you. Any other question? No one right here. Yes. Hi. Um, you said you shared your company code. Yeah. On, on live stream. How is your? Do you work on open source, or you say your boss was okay with it? Yeah. So since I mainly work on the front end, I mean I do some stuff with Node, but it's mainly front end. It's really easy to share that. Because, I mean, most of what we do on the front end, anybody can see if they just, you know, inspect it and use DevTools. So um, I explained that to my boss. And uh, from, like, even before I started live streaming, I thought open sourcing everything was very important. Um, whether or not anybody gets any value of it, I don't know. But hopefully somebody does. Uh, so everything was already open sourced. And... So when I started live streaming, that wasn't an issue uh, because it was already there. And like my boss saw this as a great marketing opportunity because like the logo of the university would be there on the screen for all these people who had never even heard of the school before. So uh, that for it was very worth it from my boss's point of view to let me do this. Uh, and then even more worth it whenever people started making very significant pull requests to the projects uh, because they now had a team that they didn't have to pay for. <laughs> but uh, I always make sure I give credit and give them shout outs on the stream. Uh, usually they're trying, people are trying to build up their portfolio when they make significant pull requests. And so I want to make sure that they get recognition for that. Thank you.